Hey there, my fellow intellectuals. Welcome back to my channel and Happy New Year. Happy 2024 to all of you watching my channel still at this point. I, I really appreciate it. And welcome to a new series that I'm starting called Relearn With Me, where I try and teach myself a subject that I once learned a long time ago, but have subse subsequently become very rusty or have just completely forgotten it. And this time I want to talk about probability. Because probability, I think, is one of the most important subjects to know as a scientist. And it's a subject that I never found intuitive. It's something that I, to this day, still struggle with sort of doing all the counting and figuring out what are all the possible outcomes and figuring out what are the events you, you expect versus you want and, and, so, and so, uh, questions of that sort. So I really want to strengthen my probability. And I think it'd be a fun way if I did it alongside you guys while I make videos about it. So without further ado, let's go right into it. So the question today involves dice. Now I actually got dice here for this problem. The green one is colored kind of funnily because of the filter on my computer, but I'm not gonna change it just because it looks kind of cool. And the question is, if we roll a dice three times in a row, what is the probability of getting uh, two sixes in a row. My pen is not working. There we go. Two sixes in a row. So essentially we want to figure out how likely is it, how probable is it if we have three dice rolls, each one of these dice representing a dice roll, and what's the probability that we get two consecutive sixes in the sequence? So we could imagine the first two rolls being a six and then the last roll being a number that's not a six, or we can think of it in sort of the reverse. We can think, what's the probability of having it the other way around, where I have a hard time contorting my hand here. But essentially, we have two sixes in a row, and then a non-six at the bottom. We can also include the case where we roll all sixes. In a row. That will also count as consecutive sixes. So why don't we formalize what I just said in words? So when I was thinking about this problem earlier, I came up with two different ways of solving it, and I really want to encourage people to, perhaps if you can think of another way, pr provide your own solution. I'd love to see how you think about probability, because I do think everyone has a different way of going about problems like these, and it's really interesting to see different ways to solve a problem. That's one of the things that drew me to physics a lot in the beginning, where you could take multiple approaches to get to the same answer. So let's go and do method one. Method one is what I call count them up, count them up. Let's just count them up. Let's write down all the cases that we can get sixes on the first two rolls. So on the first two rolls, we can get, let's say we have six, six, and then we can have six, six, one. Then we can get six, six, two, six, six, three, six, six, four, uh, six, six, five. Okay, so that's the case where we get two sixes on the first roll, and then on the last roll, it can be anything but a six, okay? We can also do the case, the opposite case, which I described before, right? Where we can have any number besides six as the first roll, like one, and then we can get six. So we can see that this is just sort of swapping the order of these two, right? And so likewise, we can write two, six, six, three, six, six, four, six, six, five, six, six. And like I said before, we can also count the case where we get sixes on all three rolls, right? So we get sixes on all three rolls. And so that would be the case, six, six, six number of the beast, so we have to draw the beast here. That is our number, I guess. I can't draw a beast well. <laughs> I don't know. That's my best attempt of drawing number of the beast, right? Number of the beast. Okay, anyway, so now that we got that out of the way, how many outcomes are there? There are five here. Five here for that case, and there's one here. 
So we have 11, I'll call them favorable, 11 favorable outcomes. And we want to know how many total outcomes are there? How many possible outcomes could there be? Well, if you think about it, we have six possibilities, six possibilities for the roll of a dice. And we have three trials, right? Three trials representing the three, you know, rolls that we have here. So this is the number of possible outcomes. This is 216. Right? So we have 216 possible outcomes, but we have 11 favorable outcomes. And so the probability of getting these consecutive sixes happening is 11 over 216. Okay, so 11, I'll just write it, 216 total outcomes. Hopefully my cursive is somewhat legible, but at least I'm saying what these words are. So this is the answer. And one way to think about this is if we take a very maybe axiomatic set theory kind of approach to probability, which is kind of the way I first learned, which is why I think I got really confused, is we talk about something called a sample space. Sample space. Sample space, typically represented by this capital omega. And the sample space is just sort of the, the space of all the possible you know, outcomes, right? So for the three rolls of this dice, we can have one, 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 two, one, one, three, and we'll go on and on and on and on until we get to number of the beast, six, six, six. And there are 216 total elements in this, in this set. So I'll say omega has 216 total elements. And remember that the outcomes that we cared about were these 11. These 11 outcomes where we have two consecutive sixes are the ones we cared about the most. And they're in this set, right? This was one of them. So when we're talking about probability, we can think of it as the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes. So we're looking for the subset of elements within omega that satisfy the condition we seek. Okay, that's the first way I thought about doing this problem. But I thought to myself, you know, you, you aren't always able to count everything up. I mean, yes, 216 is a lot, but it's countable. We could actually write down all of the, the different possible outcomes and then just pick, you know, these are the ones we really care about. But I was thinking to myself, well, you won't always have that luxury. So we should probably try and find a more general way of approaching it and maybe doing it more, um, I don't know what the right word is, but doing it without counting, at least counting all the possible ways explicitly like this. So let's go with method two. Method two. So let's think about this. What is the probability we get two sixes in a row. So, or let's, let's actually do the easiest case. What is the probability? So what is, I'll write here, probability with capital P, three sixes in a row. Well, if we think that this is a fair-sided die, which I'm, I'm gonna claim that it is, we're gonna say that the probability if we get a six on the first roll is one over six. So this is the probability you get a six on the first roll, and then you roll it again. And so that's another one sixth. And then you roll it again, and that's another one sixth. Okay, so you have one over six, one over six, one over six. Again, that's just equal to one over 216, which just recreates what we had up here, right? This is that event where we get three sixes in a row. It is one possible outcome in the 216 total outcomes, out of the 216 total outcomes in our sample space, okay? So 
That's the 216, 1 over 216 for the three sixes. So how about what is the probability you get sixes on your first two rolls and then some other number besides six on your third roll? Well, that is one out of six times one out of six. Now this number right here, you actually have a five out of six chance of getting a non-six value because there are five other numbers besides six here. And so this is five over 216, which again represents this column right here because I just wrote out explicitly all the cases where you can roll six on the first two rolls and then get a number besides six. So that is are all the five possibilities right there, five over 216. And then if we think of P, let's say number besides six, then six, six, that's just the reverse of what we had up here, right? This is just five over six on the first roll, then one over six, then one over six, which is still equal to five over 216. And that represents this column right there where we had a number besides six on the first roll and then two sixes after that. And so again, if you add up all these probabilities, one over 216 plus five over 216, plus five over 216, you get 11 over 216, which corresponds to the same answer we had right here. I know I'm just, <laughs> I'm making this art project right now. I hope it's somewhat coherent. But that is, so that are the two methods that I solved it as. And I hope this illustrated to you that typically when doing math or physics or any kind of uh, difficult subject like this, there's often more than one way to go about it. And being able to think about it in multiple ways is uh, a very important skill to have. So with that, I think that will conclude my video. Please leave a comment below telling me a different answer that you come up with if you came up with a different answer than the two I provided here. And I'd be interested to see what your thought process was like, and I hope it excites you uh, as we continue our journey in probability. With that, I bid you farewell.